I think anybody who's ever seen him play and seen him in the context of this year is always going to remember Zion Williamson among the top names that have played at Duke. But if you're asking, is he the best player to ever play at Duke? I don't think he is. I think Grant Hill is the best player ever to play at Duke. And Jay Williams would be would be right there with Grant Hill if he'd played four years and bail out early for the money. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was about the money, Jay. Christian Leitner's the most decorated and I think had uh, accomplished the most. But, but for best player ever at Duke, I would go Grant Hill. And then Zion Williamson would be in the discussion just because there's never been anybody like him. Jalen, when this first came up, I noted a look on your face that I was dying to say, what's going through your mind right now? Well, I love Zion. He's a terrific player. But what have you done for me lately is the first thing that went to my mind. And the funny thing about Billis's commentary is, unfortunately for me, I got a chance to play against two of the guys that he mentioned, and they were on the same team. I think he took Grant Hill's NBA um, prowess into effect when he talked about his actual answer. I think this has to be Christian Leitner. When you talk about the greatest college players of all time at any school, his name is going to come up before any player other that, that, that went to Duke. And I will have to say Leitner's the answer to this Jay, as, as the Dukey yourself and as one whose career is worthy of being in this discussion, who do you think is the greatest Duke player ever? Christian Leitner, hands down. Um, I, I will say that, but I also will say this. Zion Williamson, I think, deserves to have his jersey retired. And I know there are different standards at Duke. One of the standards is that you have to graduate school. But he's only one of four players since the year 1992 to average 20 points, nine rebounds, and have a true shooting percentage of 67.5. His PER is the best in the history of college basketball. It obliterates names like Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins. And if there's anybody that really represents the standards of excellence that Coach K talks about, he's humble, he's gracious, he uplifts his teammates, Greeny, and he plays for something bigger than himself. And the one thing we know is all inevitable with time is change. It's changed. I think Zion Williamson deserves to take his place among the greats. You just touched two subjects within this 45 minutes that I live. One, you talked about banners being hung. Yep. Okay, as somebody who had his banners taken down by his university. And you talk about numbers being retired. For Zion, he played one season. I actually played three seasons mm -hmm. at Michigan. And so, like, it will be interesting to see if Duke does that based on you guys' championship pedigree, based on guys like yourself that won player of the year. I think he's worthy of that. But if he's going to get that, we got to kind of get that to R.J. Barrett, too. Because the last time I checked, he actually led him in scoring this year. I, I did, but not he, Zion. He's ACC player of the year. He's ACC tournament MVP. He's ACC freshman of the year. He might be – I mean, R.J. might win one, but he might be the unanimous uh, player of the year mm -hmm. award, too. So – all those men, and his numbers per rated are stupid, man. If you were going to do it over a four-year span, he would be first in scoring. He would be third in rebounding, second in steals, oh, 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 fourth in blocks. I, I, want, I want to say – But, Jay Rose, you should have your number retired. I want, I want, you guys should have your banner hung up. I they, agree. They, the NCAA yeah. did you guys wrong. Correct. And, 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 and that's no fault of nobody. I'm not here to cry over spilled milk. I'm doing great in life. But, but the point is, <laughs> for a guy like Zion, it. though, it's going to be interesting because that would be a shift change. It would be. what I mean. Yeah. But shift changes are inevitable. But, because, because, again, now – R.J. Barrett led Duke in scoring. I think people keep forgetting that. R.J. Barrett led Duke in scoring. So but everything mean we want. He's the most valuable player because the so, team is scoring. So every, I'm just saying, so everything that we want to heap upon Zion. I disagree. As, I disagree. Just because you lead a team in scoring doesn't mean that you're the most valuable correct. player. Correct. I agree. Okay. With well, Zion Williamson correct. on the court, correct. they're a different team. Correct. They're, without correct. him on the court, they're a marginal team. Yes, yes. The, the one thing you mentioned about Grant Hill and that maybe one of the things Jay was talking about, Jay Billis, was that his NBA career factored in. You wonder how we'll look at Zion depending on what he does in the NBA. That's the point you I know? was going to make. The question Ooh. on the screen is who is the best player in Duke history, and the jumping off point for it is Zion Williamson. The question should be, who is the best Duke player this year? And I'm not 100% sure the answer isn't R.J. Barrett. If you watch that team play, look, Zion set the world on fire. Really? And I love him. Why, I really? love him. I, I love everything that he did. I don't think it's ridiculous to suggest that R.J. Barrett will be a better pro long term in the same way that we now look at Grant Hill as better than okay. Christian Leitner. Mm. They both stayed four years. And, and, and Leitner was the greatest. That, Leitner was one of the three or four most accomplished college players that, that ever lived. That also depends upon fit. That depends upon fit and where you get drafted and what style you get drafted to. Well, too, I mean, <laughs> just quote, fit relative to the league itself, to the sport and the way the game is played today. R.J. Barrett steps right into an obvious position. Watch that guy play. He's James okay. Harden. I don't know that. So you're telling me you're, you're owner of a team. You're a GM. Who do you 
you take with the first pick? Zion Williamson, because he's the biggest star in the sport. So you only take him because he's the biggest star? You don't take him because you don't think he has the best pro potential? I think he has the most upside, but I think there's significant question as to just how good he's going to be in the NBA. Am I right or wrong? I I understand where you're going, and I talked about this earlier in the year. The thing for Zion, as you always know, you know this, you lived it, is going to be fit because I don't want to see him playing for a situation where he has to play quality minutes at the five or at the four. four I agree with yep. you. Because then that's going to expose some of his weaknesses. One more for you, Greeny. Number two pick. You take John Morant, you take Cam Morant, you, you, you know, take RJ Barrett. I would have to defer to you on that because I didn't you see John Morant play. play all year Ooh. long. No, I watched two games in the NCAA yeah, tournament. Fair, fair. And he looks like Russell Westbrook to me. I, so, I mean, I love That's what I'm saying. So, these are all things that make you think about as it really starts And I agree with you. Lightning in the bottle, Zion deserves to get his number retire at Duke. But what I'm saying is, if that's the case, you consider when you have in this ceremony, you got to consider RJ Barrett as well. All right, we'll get back to in the meantime, Laura's got a great conversation to have. <laughs> exactly. so, yeah, we'll come back to this. Is your number retired? Yes, it is. It better Stop be. Stop it. 